Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Before we get started, I want to tell you about something new that I'm doing and that is providing you with free board notes. So for my most recent videos, including this one, I am taking a picture of the finished board. So once all the notes are on it and all the blanks are filled in, I'm gonna grab a picture of it, put it in PDF format and put it um, in a Google Drive folder where you can access it for free. So if you're interested in finding those board notes, check out the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe. My channel has 150 videos, biology study videos, and I'm putting up more videos to help you learn biology um, every, every week. So please check that out and make sure you subscribe. Now let's get started with today's topic, and that is population bottlenecks. So first, let's talk about what a bottleneck is, a population bottleneck. It is a very sharp reduction in the size of a population. So sharp reduction in the size of a population. And this is due to either some kind of environmental calamity or to some kind of human activity that really decimates the size of a population. It's important that you realize that this happens over a very short time frame. I'm gonna put that in all caps with an exclamation point. So it's a very short period of time. We're not talking about population declines due to climate change over the course of decades, right? We're talking about there being a sudden environmental calamity, like a drought, like a flood, like a famine, like a disease that can wipe out a majority of a population, say 80% of the population, 90% of the population in a very short amount of time, um, in a few days, in a few weeks, in a few months. So these right here would be examples of some of these environmental calamities. Um, it's also possible for human activities to do this. So we have some examples written here. Think, um, you know, over hunting, um, there's certainly evidence that in just a, a few short years, uh, passenger pigeons were like wiped off the face of the planet. That's not even a bottleneck, right? That's an extinction because of over hunting. Um, intentional culling, where 90% of a population is killed in a short amount of time would also fall into this uh, this example. Um, habitat destruction, think about some species that are maybe only present in a few forests and then those forests are deforested. Uh, you know, 90% of that habitat is just gone in a few short years. Something else humans might do is introduce non-native competitors or predators. So if you suddenly have like a new predator in a region that it's never been before or a new competitor for like a limiting resource is suddenly introduced by humans, that can have major decimating effects over a short time period um, on native populations. So all of these right here would be examples of human activities that could lead to a population bottleneck. Now, before we go on to why this matters so much, I do want to tell you where we get this name, bottleneck. Think of the neck of a bottle, right? Imagine that I've got like a two liter bottle and it's laying on its side and there's the neck, right? And then there's the, the opening of the bottle. So what we're seeing with population bottlenecks is that the size of the bottle represents the population size. And this right here represents time. And there is, remember, over a short period of time, just a sudden decrease in population size, where instead of having a population size like this, you've got a population size like this. That's why it's called a population bottleneck. Imagine a population being cut down um, until it can sort of fit through the bottleneck in, in much smaller numbers. So that's our population bottleneck. Now let's talk about why it matters. This is what your, your professor most cares about you knowing. Bottlenecks reduce genetic variation in a population. And this is a big deal. In a healthy, thriving population, you expect to see a lot of genetic variation, okay? A lot of diversity. 
That means that populations have a great number of different alleles, remember allele, that's an alternative form of a gene, that helps them to be able to handle when hardships come their way. So when you have this great reduction in genetic variation in a population, first it makes the population less robust. And what do we mean by that? Just like more susceptible. Um, there will be less genetic variation. And so if like the environment suddenly changes or humans suddenly start doing some of this, you've got a population that is already smaller, but also genetically weaker. There's just less diversity in the types of genes, uh, and then the population can struggle to adapt, so making them less able to adapt to any future calamities that happen. In very severe bottlenecks, entire alleles can be lost, just gone from the population. Remember, what is an allele? An allele is an alternative form of a gene. The best way to think about this is that when you have sexually reproducing species, they're going to get half of their um, genetic material from the mother and half of their genetic material from the father. And so even though they're inheriting like the same genes, like a gene from, um, from each parent for eye color, for example, uh, they can get different versions, different you know, mutations, different gene sequences, and those are what we call alleles. So the same genes, but just different versions of them. And in a severe bottleneck, I mean, let's think about a population where maybe um, you know, 80% of the population had a certain allele and 20% of the population had another allele for the same gene. Uh, and then 99% of the population is just gone because of one of these reasons. The 1% remaining may no longer contain both of those alleles. They may only contain one of those alleles. So an entire allele could just be gone from the genetic pool of the population. Um, also in severe bottlenecks, you know, think about a situation where you've got, um, I mean, just for, for an example over here, northern elephant seals, in the 1890s, because of overhunting, their numbers had fallen to about 30. You know, it's estimated that there were about 30 northern elephant seals left in the 1890s. Now, those populations have recovered a good deal since then, but only because that overhunting was addressed. Um, another big example is the New Zealand black, the New Zealand black robins right here. Um, recently, it was found that their population was down to five individuals and that all five of those individuals were offspring of the same female. Okay, so that right there is evidence of inbreeding. And when you have these really severe bottlenecks where you have population sizes falling to 30 or falling to five known individuals on the entire planet, the rate of inbreeding definitely increases. So what does that mean? That means that when two um, siblings that have been born in the same, um, you know, in the same clutch or the same nest or the, the same, um, from the same mother and father, uh, that they are mating with each other or that you have a, a, a mother animal mating with her son or a father animal mating with his daughter. Um, and what this does, again, is it weakens the population. It's much less robust. There's less genetic variation because close relatives are already so genetically similar. And that makes these populations less able to adapt. And so we see that there are kind of two major possibilities that come from a population bottleneck. So here we have a population, and you can see there's always some fluctuation, right? Um, you know, from year to year or from season to season, various populations of animals, plants, fungi, whatever, whatever population you're talking about, there's going to be some variation. But then you have a bottleneck event. And remember, this is a very sharp reduction, remember sharp reduction in population size over a very short period of time. So this really steep decline. And then let's say that whatever was causing 
that uh, population decline, that bottleneck to happen is mitigated. Maybe the overhunting stops. Maybe there's habitat that is set aside to be protected. Um, you know, maybe the drought or the famine is over. Um, but, but you've got this really sharp reduction in population size, and we see basically two different things that can happen. You can have the population eventually start to recover. So I'm going to write that in here, recovery. Or um, the other possibility is that you have the population continue to decline because of its lack of robustness, because of its inability to adapt, um, because entire alleles have been lost, because inbreeding is happening and that's weakening the population, and eventually that can cause extinction. Uh, and I'll just add that even when recovery happens, um, sometimes that is only due to significant human efforts to correct you know, whatever it was that went wrong. Check out my other video on the evolution of red pandas where I talk about population bottlenecks in a real world example. Red pandas have gone through quite a few bottlenecks that we know of and so I discuss more of that in my video. And um, if you're interested also in learning about some other evolutionary biology topics like speciation, I have some videos in those areas as well, like allopatric versus sympatric speciation. So you can check that one out too if you're interested. Thank you for watching Biology Professor. Remember to subscribe and I will see you next time with more biology study videos. Thanks guys.